morning. Welcome everyone to the celebration of the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We remind you that next weekend is Commitment Sunday in the Bishop's Annual Appeal. You have probably already received an envelope in the mail. If not, we encourage you to take one with you today and place it in the offertory collection next weekend. The Red Cross Floodmobile will be at the St. John Newman School parking lot on Thursday, February 24th from 12 to 6 p.m. Please sign up to save a life at redcrossblood.org using the code Newman. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father McDonald. We pray in a special way today for Jess Sebastian. On this midwinter day, cold and snow covered across much of the continent, the Holy Spirit draws us here together through a shared hunger for a life in the Lord that can overcome the hardships in our lives. Our sensory hunger and physical hunger are joined by a spiritual hunger. We hunger for the word of God to guide us and for the Eucharist to nourish us. Jesus tells us that those who are now hungry will be satisfied. May that comfort us as we hunger for light, for warmth, for guidance, for nourishment, and for eternal life in the Lord.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. I am very grateful to be able to celebrate Holy Mass with you once again. I was off last week after my retinal reattachment surgery. The doctor says all is well, and that I can return to somewhat normal activities. I'd like to really thank everybody for your prayers and your expressions of support uh, over the past couple weeks, as well as, really, I'm grateful to the priests who responded uh, on such short notice to be able to celebrate liturgies for us. Let's begin, as we always do, uh, mindful that God is with us, present among us, with his healing and forgiving love. became poor to show us the riches of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You suffered insult on behalf of those you would save. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You call us to the blessedness of the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, you teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert, 
that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord.
his hands be glad, your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we heard the Beatitudes, and when we hear about Beatitudes, we immediately think of the first one, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. But we heard a very, a slightly different version of that, not blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the poor. We've, we're not in Matthew's gospel with the eight Beatitudes, we're in Luke's gospel with four Beatitudes and four woes. And so something is different here in regards to Luke's telling us of the Beatitudes. And so uh, today, when Jesus speaks of who is blessed, it's uh, the poor, the hungry, those who are not thought well of, those who weep. These are blessed, he says. And woes are spoken of the rich, the sated or the, the, the filled, those who laugh and those who are respected. If you were to ask people today, uh, who do you consider to be blessed, the response might be, well, you know, the famous, the wealthy, the, the, the young, the healthy, the beautiful people in our world. You know, these are the kinds of things that we hold up. And, uh, but again, it's the poor, the sorrowful, the hungry, the not well thought of that Jesus says are blessed. So he takes what we might normally think of as this is the way to be and turns it upside down. So why would he say that these are the ones who are blessed? And I would submit that it's because he knows his own religious tradition. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, and often championed by the prophets, but out of the law itself, God over and over tells the people of Israel, there are those who are on the fringe, who are special in God's eyes, usually invoking the poor, the widowed, the orphan, the stranger, that these are to be held in special esteem and care. They are seen that way in God's eyes, and they are the test of the, of the health of the entire community by how they are treated. And so whenever the people of Israel explored it, exploited the poor and the vulnerable, uh, the prophets would thunder against that kind of injustice. Jesus also speaks woes against the rich, the laughing, those who are not hungry and those who enjoy status. He's not teaching, I'm sure, that we ought to not like certain people or to create class warfare or things like that, but he's trying to get us to look at our presumptions and our complacencies. It's easy when things are going well to forget about the hungry and the poor and others. And 
And so we can become, become quite self-complacent if we're not very careful. So I think what he's trying to say, first of all, is that in God's eyes, everybody matters. And God's special care for the vulnerable is meant to awaken everybody to the fact that everyone is to be cared for, but really to have a mind and a heart for those who are poor. I'd like to illustrate that maybe a little bit differently with a story. Um, it's, it's told by a, uh, a priest in the D Richmond Diocese, uh, Father Michael Renegar, who I overlapped with in seminary, and he tells of how after the earthquake in Haiti in 2010, you know, this earthquake where nine to 150,000 people were killed, let alone all the destruction that was wreaked upon a, uh, a, one of the poorest countries in the world, that a parishioner of his who was an emergency room doctor joined a medical team to go down to Haiti and to try to help out medically for the people there. And so uh, when he came back, he said to Father Michael that, that he was practicing a very primitive medicine the facilities were gone, the, the resources were scarce. You know, setting broken bones and tending the wounds. And, and uh, he said that, that uh, he delivered a pair of twins who were premature who did not live. And he said that in the poorest hospital in the United States, they would have survived. And so he's very affected by this experience. He saw firsthand the hunger there. And sometimes he himself went to bed hungry. He saw the poverty of this country, whose poverty was just taken years backwards by this earthquake. He definitely saw mourning on a catastrophic scale. And I'm sure that there were people there that wondered, and probably communicated it to him too, are we abandoned? Um, and so he came back. And what Father Michael says was that he came back convicted that he still needed to do more, that he needed to care about this. And so in a very profound way, in, 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 a, in one aspect of his life, he found some redemption. He was saved, uh, if you will. I, I, I need to shift a little bit today because we do have a, a task at hand, but I'd like to tie it in with the Beatitudes as well. But uh, I'd like to speak to how we are a parish, a community of faith, a community of disciples of Jesus Christ who, who are come together to learn and to practice what it is that Jesus stood for and taught us, including in this Sermon on the Plain in Luke's Gospel. A parish is called to be inclusive, to be welcoming of everyone. Uh, a parish is a community that listens to the word of God together and strives to, to make sure that, that you know, my listening to the word of God is not simply me filtering it through my own wants and desires and, and, and filters, but rather to somehow break past that into something that's honest and real and, and truly the word of God. And so we need each other to help in that discernment, to challenge each other, to, to discern together all these things. A parish is a community that's formed to be part of the body of Christ, and we gather together weekly uh, to be made ever more the body of Christ by being nourished with his body and blood at this table, and then to be sent out, because a parish ultimately is here to, to find that nourishment and that growth and that conviction by the word of God in order to take it back out into our daily lives and live it to be on mission, and then come back again, and be nourished, and go back out, and grow more and more, striving to learn from Jesus. I hope that what we are embarking upon that I'm announcing today, which is to build a new church in a hall up at our school campus, that this will lay the foundation for us to be a parish that's more strongly positioned to live our mission and with a new church, we'll be able to welcome people more effectively. And I think in the most profound way here, we'll be ADA, Americans with Disability Compliant.
be able to welcome people in a, in a better, enhanced way. We'll, we haven't seen these problems so much under the pandemic, but prior to the pandemic, our lack of parking will be uh, enhanced. Of our, our, we will have parking sufficient in our church, which will be larger than in fact. I think we will grow in our hearing of the Word of God. In particular, not only will we have a space within which to celebrate the liturgy of the Word, but we'll also have the flow between our school buildings, our religious education activities that happen there, and the way that we flow back and forth between our place of worship and our place of study and our place of reflection together. We'll have a new worship space that I hope will be inspiring of deeper faith. And above all, I think we will be able to grow in our sense of mission to serve the poor, to bring comfort to the sorrowing, to feed the hungry both materially and spiritually, and to be in solidarity with those who are oppressed. So the campaign to do this, we are announcing its start today. Given the title of this campaign, Building Church Together, with a little subtitle of One Faith, One Community, One Campus, because that's the, the key here is we're, we're uniting our facilities here. And uh, we raised in our first campaign four, over $4 million towards this project. We've got a long ways to go. We want to raise another $4 million in this campaign. We've proven that we can do it, and we'll get there. Maybe we do better. Even. Um, and with this second campaign, which will conclude by May, the end of May, uh, we should be in a good position to be able to break ground on that new church 10 to 12 months later in 2023. So we're in a great position, I think. One of the things, though, about this campaign is that it's going to be different from the way in which we conducted our last campaign. Uh, we really felt strongly, the leadership here at our parish felt strongly, we need to build community, build church in that sense, not just build a church facility. So as what we've done is we've, we've hired a, a campaign council where the methodology is to have receptions. And we'll have these receptions throughout the month of March, a little bit into April. And every single household in this parish will be invited to a reception. We would like to have everybody in the parish hear directly from me and from the leadership of the parish the invitation to take part in this effort. And the receptions are where we'll pass out the materials, the, the, the take-home materials. We will not ask for a pledge at the receptions. The receptions are about informing you inviting your generosity to take it home and, and prayerfully consider how you will respond. But the receptions themselves are not where you're expected to sign on the dotted line. And we want to, uh, our first receptions are going to be indoors at, in the cafeteria. We want to get that down, get, get, get our, our ability to have a party down. Uh, but we hope to, for the rest of them, as many as possible, to be outdoors at the shelter right next to where we're going to build that new church. Not only to make it something where we can see where this is going to happen, but also to also make it more comfortable for taking off masses being outdoors. So this week, you are going to receive an invitation to, a reception, to the receptions. We're doing them in three blocks, so it won't be all the receptions on that one card that you'll be sent, but a block of them. We don't want to overwhelm any one evening with numbers, so we're splitting it up. However, if you cannot make, if you're on vacation those two weeks when that block of receptions is happening, call us. We'll put you into one of the other ones. If you would like to have a personal visit rather than attend the reception, we will arrange for that as well, and we'll present materials that way as well, too. Um, just let us know. And, uh, and so at those receptions, we will present a more detailed presentation of the of the, uh, the vision for these, this uh, move that we will make, how we're going to get there, what it will look like, even a little fly-through that the architects will provide us around and inside the church, so drawings will be there, as well as a video that, that brings the voices of a lot of our parishioners to also explain why they believe in this project. We also ask that you RSVP as soon as possible so we can plan for these receptions and have sufficient quantities of things ready for them. So let us know right away. Send that reply card back as soon as you can. 
or call us if you need to make arrangements. Uh, there will be an, a, a QR code on the invitation as well. You can use that to RSVP, or you can use the card that's enclosed. We also need volunteers to help us over the next few months. Uh, and there's a card, cards at the ends of the pews, and I invite you to pass those down to people in the pew. There's pencils as well. And we're looking for volunteers to help us out. And if we have a lot of volunteers, it's easy to spread out the labor of this. And there's three kinds of things we need help with. One is to make phone calls. It's not solicitation phone calls. It's simply to help encourage the RSVP uh, of people that haven't responded yet to us to let us know they're coming to a reception. So it's not soliciting. It's simply uh, calling people. And there's also going to be a few mailings, including this week, these invitations. Some mailings are going to be sent out. We need people to stuff envelopes and put stamps on and things like that. And then helping with the receptions. Uh, to welcome people, to serve the, uh, the beverages and foods, to, to bring some energy to the, to the reception as well, uh, to help set up and take down and so forth. So we hope to spread out the labor broadly and, and, and not commit you to a lot of things or a lot of days of things, but just you know, to spread it out. We've had a good response thus far. So you can use the QR code as well to respond. And print, print please, your name. and email address and phone number on it, and then check off what type of volunteering you're willing and able to do. And we'll give you a call in the next couple weeks. You can put them in the collection basket or give them to me or an usher after Mass. You know, an effort like this takes a very broad participation. It takes a lot of people, a lot of gifts to the campaign to raise the funds of this kind of magnitude. You might even make some new friends, we hope, and acquaintances in the process. I look forward to speaking with everyone at a reception in March. I hope you'll be as excited as me with the vision for our future facilities as a parish. Thank you for your generosity to our first campaign. Thank you for supporting our effort to build a church together this year and into the future. stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten the Son of God, the one the Father of all things, God the God the Father, the God the Father, the God the Father, God the Father, the God the God the Father, 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 the God and for our salvation, who came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate by the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the righteous body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Jeremiah says that blessed are they who trust in the Lord. Trusting that the Lord will hear our prayers, we call to mind our needs and the needs of our world. For the church, that we may be an outward sign of God's favor toward the poor, the hungry, the excluded, and the grieving, by giving, nourishing, welcoming, and consoling those in need of God's blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in government, that they may be attentive to the needs and concerns of the least influential of those they represent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are homeless and all who cannot afford to adequately protect themselves and their families from the bitter winter weather, that they may be kept warm and safe. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, that their love for each other may be strengthened as they exercise it with each other and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through our participation in the Bishop's Annual Appeal, we continue to be channels of the living and loving presence of Christ in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may continually strive to live our lives in the spirit of the Beatitudes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all who are ill, for those listed in our prayer list, and for those who have died, especially Les Sebastian, Patricia Condister, that their families and loved ones may find comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in silence, we offer prayers for those we hold in our hearts, for those who have asked for our prayers, and those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Monday being Valentine's Day, uh, if your sweetheart is standing next to you, join your hands as we bless couples. God of love, bless the couples who are here. Open their hearts to one another. May they grow in love, care, and affection day by day. And may Christ your Son be their guide and companion on their journey. And we ask you to hear the prayers that we lift, lift up to you this day through Christ our Lord.
Our gifts are prepared. Pray, sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop with all the clergy and your entire people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
that with them we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. In a safe manner, we offer each other a sign. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will show you.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated just a moment. Even as we're announcing the start of the Building Church Together campaign for our parish, we're also in the midst of the season where the bishop and our diocese calls upon our generosity as well. So the bishop's annual appeal. Uh, if, if you've not received, every household should receive a correspondence from the diocese that will have in it, I'm sure, a brochure. And it, so it'll be a different kind of card but, or envelope, but a way to respond to this annual appeal. And your generosity is most appreciated for the BAA. If you've lost or misplaced your card, or if you haven't received one, there are more brochures in the vestibules of the church and more envelopes in the pews. So grab one and take it home. And, and next Sunday is uh, the second collections for the BAA, and you can also turn in your envelope or pledge card next week for the BAA. It does great work. We often are the beneficiaries in the parishes of the work of the diocese. Um, and then, uh, secondly, uh, if your birthday falls in the month of February, would you please stand? February birthdays, please. And nice and loud, tell us your name. So starting way in the back over here. Very good. And, and, and I only have one good eye right now, so <laughs> back here. And on around two. Terry. Three in a row there. <laughs> Tony. Have I missed anybody? Happy birthday to all of you. Many happy returns. You may be seated. If your wedding anniversary falls in February, would you please stand? February wedding anniversaries. Ah, we do. There. And just one. All right, so. Tell us your names and what number anniversary you are marking. 18 years. Congratulations. I'll ask for newcomers in just a moment, but first, visitors. Anybody visiting us and joining us for worship this Sunday? Any visitors? They're gonna, everybody's staying home so they can watch the Super Bowl tonight, probably, <laughs> <laughs> this week. Uh, are there any newcomers to our parish, people that are planning to join or have joined and intend to be ongoing members at St. John's? Anybody new? Ah, we do. Very good. Anyone else? So, uh, over here as well. So tell us your names and where you are from. Very good. From Columbia. And back over here. From California. Good to have you. And... Very good. And did I miss anybody? All right, people, put a target on them. Make them feel welcome. Speak to them, all right? We welcome them. So if you stood before for a birthday, anniversary, or newcomers, would you please stand one more time as we sing a blessing over you? May God bless and keep you. May God's face shine on you. May God be kind to you and give you peace. I invite all to stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.